Hi everyone, I'm Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I've got a very quick Friday Reads and a <laughs> slightly horrifying book haul. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, housekeeping before I get started. Um, I know last week I mentioned my mom had the shingles. She's still dealing with the shingles. It's, um, things are scabbing over, but it still hurts and is really painful. She tried driving earlier this week and she said it was excruciating, all the like little just micro jostling and stuff. Um, her shirt was irritating her skin, then her skin was moving and, but she got out and she drove. Um, so she was getting much better. And then this morning when I spoke to her, she couldn't get warm again and was still in bed. So I don't know if a fever came back or what. So she's making progress and backsliding and making progress and backsliding. So I, I don't know. And then um, earlier this week on Monday night, I participated in a live show for Crime and Punishment uh, Read Along. This is a super fun, really, really active group on Voxer. And that was this was our first discussion about the book itself, the second live discussion in total. We've got one every few weeks through the end of October. It's not too late to start. Please go ahead and watch the intro and um, the live, live show on Monday that I was on. I'll link them both below. It's being hosted by the wonderful Danny at Spinelli Speaks. She's doing such an awesome job at coming up with questions and keeping everybody focused and having a good time and it's making it so much easier for people like me who overthink everything and um, yeah. It's wonderful. So I encourage you to join in if you haven't already, or at least watch some of the live streams. They're really fun. We've got some really smart people there too, excluding myself. I just, I don't know, ah, whatever. But it was fun to participate anyways. Um, and as for me, the rest of the week then was dealing with an infection of my own. So I basically have been sleeping the last three, three and a half days. Um, I have to work this afternoon, so not sure how that's going to go. I think I'll be sitting for as much of the massage as I can just because I, I don't know how I'm going to get through it, but I will. It'll be fine. Um, so yeah, not a ton has been read this week. So last week I told you I was so out of it and like tired and whatever. Um, I forgot two books that I read. That's how tired and out of it it was. <laughs> So the first one I forgot is this one. It's an ebook. Um, it's Frozen by Anne Cleves. This is a short story in the Vera Stanhope series. It's um, a day off that Vera has. She doesn't get those very often. And she goes out on a walk and I, goes into a church. And they're doing some excavating inside the church itself. And they find a more recent dead body. So she gets involved in that, of course, because how can she not? She's there and it's Vera. So this was good. If you're reading the series, I would say try and get your hands on it. I think it was free on Kindle um, or it was a dollar, but it wasn't very much. It's not the most outstanding thing in the world. It is just a short story that's unnecessary for the Vera universe. But if you're like me, I like any kind of Vera I could get. So that was good. I gave it three stars. It was just fine. And then the other book that I finished last week and forgot about is The View from the Corner Shop by Kathleen Hay. Uh, the Diary of Yorkshire Shop Assistant in Wartime. So this is part of the, oh gosh, what was the official name? Mass Observation Project that the United Kingdom sponsored, put on um, from 41 to 44, where they had regular people write diaries of their life. So this is Kathleen's account of working in her family's shop during the war. Uh, set up diary style, it's sort of chunked into six month or one year kind of chunks again, sorry. Um, and it's interesting how much things are the same regarding people and their worries about availability of foods. And this one, it was onions and then oranges were a big problem for a long time, not to mention eggs and then, oh my God, milk, flour, some tea issues. Uh, yeah, there's always something that they couldn't get a hold of because there was some national shortage and then people would come in and accuse them of 
stealing things and hoarding things for themselves. And she said at one point, it's like they think we have an onion orgy in the backyard. Like, you know, <laughs> so it's cute and funny, but it's also really well observed. And you're really there with her as she's going through the day. Now it is very repetitive. I don't know how a book like this wouldn't be at least somewhat repetitive, but this is really repetitive. About Mrs. X came in today and was asking again for apples for her son, but we don't have anything. So she had to go the shop down or, or the buses aren't running again so no one can get around and yeah it's a little samey but it was still very interesting. I started this in March at the beginning of quarantine here in my state and uh, just took my time reading it. I did like the epilogue. I appreciated that and I appreciated her thoughts especially on when the Americans joined the war finally. It was some very honest, very truthful, I, I totally get it things but then it makes me also want to search out a uh, not American history of the United States. I mean, not the United States, of the of World War II. Um, so I'll be doing some trolling, perhaps a book depository later on for a British perspective or French or maybe not German, um, Spanish, Italian, like anything else that was not American history of World War II. So interesting. I enjoyed it, three and a half stars. Um, if it sounds interesting to you, go pick it up, try and find a copy. I think it's worth it. But there are other um, titles that have been published from the Mass Observation Project and maybe try those as well. I think I have one or two here, but I'm not sure what they are. So finished this one last week. And the only one I finished this current week, because I was like I had 50 pages left in this thing, was Island of Glass by Nora Roberts. This is the third in the, oh God, Guardians trilogy. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so this takes place in Ireland this time at Bran's house. Bran is sort of, he's the man in the first relationship in the first book. He's a huge witch, like very powerful, all this stuff about this castle on land that was owned by our immortal guy's um, family for centuries and yeah, so this wraps up the adventure of the six of these people trying to fight off this dark goddess and her um, help her good sisters and try to find the island of glass, return these jeweled hearts back to the goddess has created them in the first place. You know, good. I liked this one the best out of all of them. I really did. Usually I like the first one the best. The second one is okay. The third one is just kind of also okay but this one was reversed the first one was okay the second one I liked more and this one I liked the best so I don't know the Renoir Roberts trilogy if you've read them before if you've read one you've kind of read them all but still always a good time still easy reading you know happy to have it done okay now for the book haul part um I'm gonna make this as fast as I possibly can um <laughs> Let's just get started. This is for two weeks essentially because I was not with it last week and yeah, whatever. Okay, so first up is Golden and Death by J.D. Robb. This is number 50 in the In Death series. This one, I, um, I'm i reading this series too. I'm only on book four. My mom, however, is waiting for this one. So I ordered it and um, here it is. We're passing it on to her to read whenever she is no longer delirious. Then from my friend Michelle for Buy a Friend a Book Day. Um, she got this when she was on vacation in, I think, North Dakota. It's Harry Potter and the Art of Spying Unauthorized by uh, Lynn, it's a Bowie, Boogie, I don't know, and Peter Ernest and illustrated by Kevin Cannon. So this is really cute. So it covers each of the Harry Potter books. And here, like here's a maze, help the fat fryer find the Hufflepuff common room. There's stuff in here on code breaking, filling in the blank. Um, oh yeah, more code breaking. All sorts of different codes, holy cow. Spying things, countermeasures, matching games, crossword puzzles. This looks like a lot of fun. And part of me thinks I shouldn't do this, I should just save it because it's a Harry Potter thing and I save Harry Potter things, but also this just looks like fun so I might just actually do it and screw it and enjoy the book. Isn't that kind of the point of having a book? She says, I don't know. Eh. Um, okay, 
Oh, I finally got my copy of the second book in the Enola Holmes series. This is The Case of the Left-Handed Lady by Nancy Springer. So now I feel confident in starting the series. Because actually, I think it... Oh no, it's next week that the first movie comes out with my boyfriend in it. So <laughs> I need to get cracking on that maybe this weekend. So yeah, to see what this second book is about. But glad to finally have it. And this one is one that I bought for my mom for some reason, Christmas, birthday, Mother's Day, I don't know, a few years ago. And she read it and gave it back to me. So this is The House in Norm Gardens by Penelope Lively. Uh, Claire lives with her two elderly aunts in a huge rambling Victorian house full of old furniture, papers, clothes, and strange objects from her great-grandfather's travels. Claire becomes obsessed with a weird-looking shield she discovers in the attic. Attic, not attic. Hazy dreams of shadowy people from another time and place begin to haunt her. Who are they and what do they want? So this sounds like a lot of Penelope Ladley's work, which I really enjoy, my mom really enjoys. I know she loved this one, so looking forward to getting this one at some point in time. I think this is middle grade. It's got larger print, so I'm assuming this is kind of a middle grade book. But whatever. Doesn't matter. It'll be good. And then for my social justice project, I haven't started The Warmth of Other Suns yet, but it's on my start next list. I, excuse me, I have a confession. I, like all the books I'm currently reading that I have been currently reading for months are getting overwhelming and I'm starting to really resent them. So I might just take all the bookmarks out and reshelve them and just try again later because... I don't want to read anything almost now because I feel like I should read these other ones first. It's awful. Anyways, Warmth of Other Suns is first. But then next up, which I, I know I asked everyone for recommendations and thank you so much for them. Um, I am notating them and going to be slowly getting them throughout the years. Years through this year, hopefully. So this is the new edition of The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. There is no, that's there, not there. Um, about prisons and how black men in particular are more likely to be imprisoned than any other race or gender. Um, and it's just about how the criminal justice system is completely screwed up, which I think is not news to anybody. But yeah, this is promising to be educational and excellent and heartbreaking and enraging. So this will be next up after The Warmth of Other Suns. And in that same vein, so I got my Book of the Month Club books, and my pick this month was Cast, The Origin of Our Discontent by Jeanette Wilk or Isabel Wilkerson, excuse me, who wrote The Warmth of Other Suns. So I will read this after Jim Crow. I, yeah, same as that one. Educational, infuriating. I need to educate myself more, so... This will be up next, next. That makes sense, right? Um, okay, then also from Book of the Month Club, I had to get something fun for myself. And I really enjoyed Catherine Center's work. I only read one of her books. I realize I own another one, but I really liked it. So this is what you wish for. So um, it's classified as a summer read. Oh, that's right. So Samantha is the main character here. She's a school librarian and she's happy with her life. And then um, a new school principal starts named Duncan and she loved him and he didn't notice her. So now it's kind of, they, they clash and I'm sure they'll fall in love at some point. I don't, you know, whatever. Sort of a past love, but he didn't really know she existed. So here for it. Sounds like a nice read. Palette cleanser. Um... Okay, then we have got, I should have organized more, I apologize. Uh, I had to buy this one, so uh, used. So this is The Bridgertons Happily Ever After by Julia Quinn. Sorry for the glare. So the Bridgerton series is a romantic series um, and Sarah from Steeped in Books slash The Bookish Knitter now, um, she recommended like two or three years ago um a series for people to start that were going to be made into a movie or a tv show sometime soon so she recommended the virgin river series by robin carr which i 
read and I'm running with now. I think I'm on book eight or nine. Um, not the best things ever, but they're really fun reads and that's kind of all I can concentrate on now. So that, and she also recommended the Bridgertons series. So this will be put out by Netflix sometime soon. They have already filmed it, this series, Bridgerton series. Uh, Shonda Rhimes is producing, I think, and directing as well. So I wanted to get my hands on the Bridgerton books I was missing. So this collection features epilogues for each of the individual eight books in the Bridgerton series. So I've got this. And then I, let's see, from the rest of these here, sorry for the shaking, are all from Paperback Swap, which Paperback Swap, I say it's free. It's not free. It's $20 for the year, and you get, um, you don't have to pay a percentage. I think it was 50 cents to do the print from home postage method. If you pay $20 for the year, you get like a larger wish list and everything else. I don't really know. Um, but you do, then you get a credit for every book that you send, which costs you like $3.50. And then that credit will get you a book that you don't have to pay anything for. So it's not free, but it's closest to free as I can get because I use it all the time. Sorry, a little blurb for paperback swap over. Um, but back to Bridgerton's. I got these two. Um, it's Lady Whistledown Strikes Back. She must be the narrator, I think, in a Bridgerton series. I haven't started yet. So it's Julia Quinn has a short story in here with these other romance authors. And then another collection very similarly, The Further Observations of Lady Whistledown. So I have these two to read after the other one. And then I've got these three from the, no, these two from the Bridgerton series. I've got On the Way to the Wedding, which is the eighth. And When He Was Wicked, which is, I believe, the sixth. So the series follows eight siblings who are all adopted. So I think that's right. Anyways. And then I've got this one. Again, the Alton Paperback Swap. Um, First Comes Scandal, a Bridgerton sequel. So she wrote, this is uh, Ravenhurst, Ravenels, Raven someone. Rokesby. See? Close. <laughs> This is the Rokesby series, which um, the Rokesby's preceded the Bridgertons. So this is the third or fourth, fourth in that series just came out this year. So I've got this for that series also. You see why I have a problem with books. And then the last one I got from Paperback Swap is Weekend Warriors by Fern Michaels. This is the start to the Sisterhood series. My mom is a massive fan of this series and I have checked out this out from the library a couple of times had to return it because of holds. I just thought, screw it. I just have a copy here now when I ever want to start it. So I've got that. And last but not least, apologies for the phone. I have Troubled Blood by Robert Galbraith. This is over 900 pages, the fifth in the Cormoran Strike series. I can't wait to read this. I think I might start on Saturday or Sunday because this is going to be like a one sitting book as much as it can be. So yeah, that's it for me. I hope you're doing well and staying safe. And I, um, oh, it was a crap call anyways. Hope you're doing well and staying safe and um, wearing a mask in public, please. And hope you could breathe okay, West Coast. You're still in my prayers, my gosh. Yeah, okay. Everyone take care of yourselves and take care of each other. And I will see you again very soon.